Mr. Chancellor, Chair of the Board of Governors, Madam President, graduands, and honored guests, it is my very great pleasure and honor to welcome Elaine Keeler, Carleton Research Professor Emerita, to this morning's convocation. In a remarkable career spanning 50 years, Professor Keeler has established an international reputation as a leading proponent for Canadian music. Throughout her career, she has been tirelessly dedicated to the study, performance, and promotion of Canadian music. And the scope of her lens has been broad. Following the model of the late great German Canadian musicologist Helmut Kallmann, her dear friend and mentor, she has championed Canadian music in all of its manifestations, embracing Canadian folk, indigenous, popular, and art musics in her research and advocacy. From the establishment of the School of Canadian Studies in 1957 to the present day, Carleton University has been committed to fostering scholarship on Canadian cultural heritage. Dr. Keeler's arrival in 1977 brought strong and dedicated leadership to the musicological side of this mission. At Carleton, she initiated the first Canadian university-level course to be offered on First Peoples Music of Canada, as well as the first regular calendar course to be given specifically on Canadian music. More recently, she created and spearheaded the Centre for Indigenous Research, Culture, Language and Education in collaboration with John Medicine Horse Kelly and a large, dynamic and multidisciplinary research team. In 2006, Dr. Keeler's seminal text on Canadian music, titled Music in Canada, Capturing Landscape and Diversity, was published by the McGill Queen's Press. It is a monumental 500-page volume that explores the rich diversity of musical genre and activity in Canada. And she has served as a musical consultant on innumerable documentary film projects produced by the CBC, CTV, TV Ontario, and the National Film Board of Canada. Through her teaching, she has mentored literally hundreds of undergraduate and graduate students now active in North America and abroad who emphasize Canadian music in their research and performances. Throughout her career, the importance and impact of Dr. Keeler's work has been acknowledged by, Canad by Canada's leading arts, education, and scholarly societies. In 1999, she received the very first Canadian Women's Mentor Award in the Arts and Culture category. And in 2004, she was awarded the Helmut Kallman Award by the Canadian Association of Music Libraries for her work on Canadian music. In 2013, for her vast scholarly contribution, Dr. Keeler was awarded the prestigious SOCAN Canadian University Music Society Award of Excellence for the Advancement of Research in Canadian Music. And this past June, Dr. Keeler was named to the Order of Canada by Governor General of, of Canada, David Johnston. As you are about to hear, Professor Keeler is also a truly prodigious pianist. From a very young age, she toured widely in Canada, the United States, Europe, and the former Soviet Union, often premiering works by Canadian composers. To date, she has released no less than 26 recordings, almost all of them featuring Canadian compositions, some of which she commissioned. And she has given premier performances of piano and chamber works by some of Canada's most distinguished composers, including Patrick Cardi, Mary Gardner, Peter Paul Kakrowski, Alexina Louis, Jean Papineau Couture, Christine Duncan, and John Weinzweig. She also created the Carlton Sound Label, under which a series of more than a dozen important recordings of Canadian music has been produced. Among other things, the Carlton Sound catalog features previously unrecorded works by previously unsung Canadian women composers and performers, a cause to which Dr. Keeler has been a tireless and dedicated champion. In 2012, she issued a magisterial and cr critically acclaimed four-CD set of recordings under the Gala Records label titled Sounds of North, Two Centuries of Canadian Piano Music. Music critic John Tarodes of Musical Toronto expressed a deep gratitude felt by so many of us. And I quote, Thank goodness there is an Elaine Keeler, he wrote a devoted contributor to our assembled storehouse of Canadian music, and a champion not only of Canada's women composers, but also of the musical traditions of Canada's First Nations and of new music." End quote. It therefore brings me great pleasure to recommend Professor Elaine Keeler, a distinguished Canadian and a remarkable scholar, educator, and performer for this important honorific. 
Mr. Chancellor, in recognition of her extraordinary contribution to the appreciation, knowledge, and understanding of Canadian music through outstanding work as a performer, recording artist, arts advocate, researcher, and teacher, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Music honoris causa upon Elaine Keeler. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors and upon recommendation of the University Senate, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Music honoris causa. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, Chair of the Board, Madam President, graduates, and honored guests. First of all, I must say that in my wildest dreams, I never expected to be standing in front of you this morning being given an honorary doctorate. Many a time, I have sat on this stage as part of the academic contingent and had the pleasure of listening to numerous fine speeches, such as that given by Roberta Jameson. Today, I will aim to find some inspiring words and sounds that will send you, the graduates, and your supportive family members and friends out into the world to more fully apply your skills. Each graduate is grateful to the guidance and mentoring received from parents, other family members, and teachers to get to this momentous day. I am no different, and in preparing for this event, I realized how much a guiding principle that my parents gave me has been a major influence throughout my life. From an early age, I can recall being told that I was placed in this world to make life richer and more fulfilling for others. I have largely tried to do this through being involved with music in various capacities, as a solo performer or as a member of a chamber or vocal group, a teacher, a writer, and a researcher. In many ways, I feel very lucky that it was this discipline that claimed my attention. The great pianist and composer of the 19th century, Franz Liszt, stated, music embodies feeling without forcing it to contend and combine with thought, as is required in most arts, and especially in the art of words. I certainly enjoy other arts whether that of literature or visual media, among others. However, I believe what Liszt was trying to express was that music allows us to construct meaning in sounds from our own experiences. As a listener to music, we can allow our imagination to soar and not be hampered by imposed guidelines. Scientists continue to discover that involvement in music has many positive effects upon an individual that are distinct from pursuing other types of artistic expression. Music has long played a role in the formation and solidarity of a group or nation. That point was forcefully impressed upon me when I had the privilege of witnessing music making among the Dene peoples in the Northwest Territories. Today, some researchers are examining how music can and could be used to be effective in settling conflicts. By exploring how listening to music and participating in music making affects a person, researchers continue to find positive evidence. We have long known that auditory exposure to music can have an impact on our emotions, but now there is documentation to indicate how being a musician, whether it is being part of a drum group, singing in a choir, or learning how to play an instrument, 
can change areas of our brains. Because each of these activities demands complex movements and coordination, the premotor cortex and the cerebellum of participating individuals become more developed than that of non-musicians. In fact, neurologists and those working in the fields of imaging activities of the brain have been able to confirm that the right occipital cortex and right parietal areas expand significantly only with involvement in musical activities. This recent scientifically documented research about the impact of music making on the individual will continue to expand here at Carleton in the new health sciences buildings and elsewhere. Meanwhile, let us return to the listening experience. As I go to the piano to perform the late Patrick Cardi's Silver and Shadow, a professor also hired here in 1977. For today's occasion, I chose this composition as I believe you can use your imagination while listening to these sounds to reflect on how you have arrived at this point in your life and then go forward to new challenges and accomplishments. <laughs> 